In other news, the Apollo 17 astronauts are reported smoothly on course tonight for a lunar landing next Monday afternoon. The astronauts burned their third stage rocket engine for an extra six seconds this morning to make up for their delayed departure from Cape Kennedy. Space officials say they're confident the Apollo 17 will make up for the lost time and arrive at the moon right on schedule. Today's quotable quote came from astronaut geologist Jack Schmidt, the first scientist ever to go on a space flight. If there ever was a fragile appearing piece of blue in space, he said, it's the Earth right now. I watched the launching of Apollo 17 last night with a good deal of nostalgia. Rocket launchings are an area, maybe the only area, where I am more of a pioneer than latecomers like Walter Cronkite and Frank Reynolds. They came in after things got easy. My first space shot was Vanguard, 15 years ago yesterday. Anybody out there remember Vanguard? The scene setting takes two elements. First, Russia was first in space in the geophysical year with a satellite the size of a basketball. Ours was Vanguard, the size of a small grapefruit. But the people at the Navy and the Martin Company kept saying we were small because we were more sophisticated. Second, in those days, it was all secret. No VIP areas with luminaries like Spiro Agnew and Eva Gabor. We weren't allowed within five miles, and we had to pick up rumors of launch time from barmaids and disgruntled Air Force officers, in the case of a Navy launching, or Navy officers when the Air Force was in charge. So there I was, seven miles from the launch site, on the porch of a vacationing colleague's cottage, eyes glued to binoculars. Inside the cottage, the colleague's wife was linked by phone to network headquarters in New York, where an executive was prepared to give the signal that would send the bulletin America gets into space, into 20 million homes. Just before my eyes fell out, I saw the flash. I yelled, there it goes. Colleague's wife relayed, there it goes. Then, in parts of a second, I saw something was wrong and yelled, hold it. Colleague's wife yelled, hold it. But it was too late. The eager executive had hung up and put the bulletin procedure into operation, and 20 million people had heard the exultant announcement that Vanguard had been successfully launched. Well, Vanguard had, of course, gone only about three feet into the air before falling over. But it took 20 minutes to get back through to New York and explain that. Do you suppose that's why Frank and Walter were there last night and I wasn't? Howard? The Apollo 17 astronauts today fired their main spacecraft engine for the first time, and that brief burn went perfectly, putting them right on target for entering moon orbit on Sunday. It's been a routine day for the crew, Eugene Cernan and Jack Schmidt, who are to begin their moon explorations on Monday, inspected their lunar lander. While they drive around the moon's surface, Ron Evans will remain in the command module, circling the moon. And CBS News learned today that he'll be helped in his observations by the first Soviet space materials taken along on an Apollo flight. Evans has a photo of the backside of the moon taken by an unmanned Soviet spacecraft. An engine on the Apollo 17 spacecraft was fired briefly today to straighten the Apollo course to the moon. Apollo 17 will reach the moon on Sunday, and the landing is scheduled for Monday. The astronauts, Cernan, Evans, and Schmidt, are now well past the halfway mark on the trip to the moon. Their spirits are good, and Cernan told Mission Control in Houston today, we're looking forward to what's coming. Good evening. Apollo 17 astronauts Eugene Cernan and Jack Schmidt who may be the last Americans to journey to the moon in this century, have made their landing on the lunar surface. But they've not yet begun their television transmissions back to Earth. Cernan and Schmidt landed on the moon this afternoon, and here's how it went. There it is, Houston. Here's Camelot. Wow. Wow. Target. I see it. We got them all. 42 degrees, 37 degrees, through 5,500. 38 degrees. LNG, you'll go for landing. 60 feet. 60 feet. Going down about two, very little dust, very little dust. 40 feet, going down at three. Stand by for touchdown. Stand by. 25 feet, down at two. Feels good. 20 feet. Going down at two. 10 feet. 10 feet. Cut contact. Up, push, engine stop, engine arm, proceed, command override off, boat control ahead, hold, pings auto. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Oh, man, look at that rock out there. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. I think I can see the rim of Camelot. Roger. Epic moment of my life. Where'd you land? 
never let me look outside at all. Hey, you can see the boulder tracks. At this moment, Cernan and Schmidt are preparing to step out of the Challenger spacecraft for their first walk on the lunar surface. For the latest on what they're doing, Morton Dean reports from the Mann Spacecraft Center in Houston. Walter, the astronauts are not very much different than the rest of us, I suppose. They are running late as they prepare for this evening's outing, their outing on the moon. Last reported between 20 and 25 minutes late. No serious problems, though. Cernan now expected to put his footprints in the lunar dust at about 7 p.m. Eastern time. Schmidt and Cernan, once they leave their motel on the moon, the spacecraft, uh, Challenger, the LEM, will spend about seven hours out on the surface this evening, five of those hours deploying various scientific instruments and experiments. There are several new experiments on this mission. Two hours this evening will be devoted to geology, and they will take a ride in the lunar rover. Cernan, on this 11th uh, of December, becomes the 11th man to walk on the moon. Schmidt will follow him. They will come out of the uh, hatch here onto the front porch and down the familiar nine steps onto the surface of the moon. It will spend a total of some 75 hours on the moon, which will be a record for man's exploration there. This is Morton Dean, CBS News at the Manned Spacecraft Center, Houston. Cernan and Schmidt will soon be stepping down those steps and then an hour later turning on their television cameras and CBS News will present a special report of their pictures from the moon beginning at 11.30 tonight Eastern Time, 10.30 Central. Good evening. Apollo 17 astronauts Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt are on the moon and preparing to start their first moonwalk. They arrived this afternoon in a letter-perfect flight of their lunar module, which they set down only a couple of hundred feet from their scheduled landing place. Extraordinary accuracy, especially since the Taurus Mountains, where they landed, posed some terrain problems. They are perfectly positioned now for the three trips across the lunar surface they will make during 75 hours on the moon. And circling the moon, busy in the command module America, is astronaut Ron Evans. So all is well with Apollo 17, and here is what it sounded like today as the spacecraft Challenger zoomed toward the surface of the moon. Okay, stand by for pitch over. Oh, are we coming in? Oh, baby. Okay. Through 9,000. Stand by for pitch over, Jack. 8,000. I'll need the pro. I'll give it to you. Pitch there over. There it is. Proceeded. And there it is, Houston. There's Camelot. Wide wow. on target. I see it. We got them all. 42 degrees, 37 degrees, to 5,500. 38 degrees, 5,000 feet. 40 feet, going out at 3. Stand by for touchdown. Stand by. 25 feet, down at two, feels good, 20 feet, going down at two, 10 feet, 10 feet, that contact, that push, engine stop, engine arm, proceed, command override off, boat control ahead, hold, pings auto, okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Roger, Challenger, that's super. Oh, boy, you bet it is, Gordo. Boy, you said shut down, I shut down, and we dropped, didn't we? Yes, sir. But we is here. And is we here? How is that look? That, that looks good. good. Pressures look great. Yeah, Tuesday, I'm just a little bit more before and a little bit after. Okay, Gordo, that's a little bit better. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Good. Okay, Gordo, that's good. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. 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 Yes, sir. Houston, you can tell America that Challenger is a Taurus Littrell. Astronauts Eugene Cernan and Jack Schmidt are still in their spacecraft Challenger, running about uh, 15 or 20 minutes behind schedule, which means they hope to start their first walk on the moon in about 15 or 20 minutes from now. NBC News will be on the air tonight starting at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time to describe what happens. Here, in Mission Control, they're still talking about that near-perfect landing. The flight controllers say it was just about the best landing ever made. The spacecraft is down on a relatively flat spot on a slope that tilts the front end of the spacecraft Challenger up very slightly, about five degrees, which means no trouble at all for the men. On the moon, they're in good shape. 
getting ready to start their moonwalk, the first one, in just a few minutes. Roy Neal, NBC News, in Mission Control. As Roy Neal reported, our NBC News coverage of the flight of Apollo 17 will resume this evening at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. And later this evening at 11.30 Eastern Time, we'll have a longer report on the day Cernan and Schmidt spent in the Taurus Mountains of the Moon. The two exploring members of the Apollo 17 mission have landed where they were supposed to on the moon and in a short time will leave their lunar module to begin a search for important clues to the moon's history. We have a report on the mission from ABC's Jules Bergman. Even before Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt began the engine burn to set their LEM, the Challenger, down on the moon, they'd pinpointed the landing site as they flew over it early today, right down to geologist co-pilot Schmidt picking out the craters. Eight minutes after the final engine burn, they pitched the LEM over for their first clear look at the moon's surface, and there was no doubt where they were. And there it is, Houston, there's Camelot. Wow. Right on target. I see it. We got them all. 42 degrees, 37 degrees, to 5,500. This was their target, right down and ahead of them, Taurus Litro, a high valley surrounded by towering mountains on four sides. And they landed within 300 feet of the target point. It may have been the sixth time men have landed on the moon, but you'd never know it by the excitement of veteran Gene Cernan and rookie Jack Schmidt. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Roger, Challenger, that's super. Shut down, I shut down, and we dropped, didn't we? Yes, sir. But we is here. Man, is we here. Houston, you can tell America that Challenger is a Taurus Litro. Oh, man, look at that rock out there. Absolutely incredible. A long first night on the moon is ahead of Cernan and Schmidt as they perform their first 7-hour EVA. After leaving the LEM and deploying the lunar rover, they'll first place the Apollo scientific experiments around their LEM, the Challenger. Then boarding the rover, they'll head east on the first traverse, a relatively short hop, some two and a half miles down to the edge of Emory Crater right here. They have 21 hours of EVAs and three long, hard days on the moon ahead of them. The volcanic highland they've landed on should give geologist Schmidt's skilled mind and eyes surefire clues as to how the moon got the way it is, which is what he and Cernan are out to learn on this, America's last trip to the moon for a long time. This is Jules Bergman at ABC Space Headquarters. ABC News will broadcast special reports on the Apollo 17 mission throughout this evening as developments warrant. Apollo 17 astronauts Eugene Cernan and Jack Schmidt slept late today after their initial work period on the moon that lasted until the early hours this morning. We have a report from ABC science editor Jules Bergman on what they did last night and what awaits them tonight. It was a long day of moonwalking for Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt in the naked glare of the lunar sun where there is no night and another long stretch is ahead of them. After deploying the flag that had flown in mission control, Scientist Jack Schmidt carried the scientific experiment package away from the LEM and found the footing tricky, the dust deep, and the terrain more difficult than first imagined. The site has been called a geologist's paradise. I am. I'm going to be a little bit behind you if I have to work on a fender anyway. Yeah, you can walk a bit more slowly than you want. Drilling eight-foot deep holes for an experiment to take the moon's internal temperature and record neutron particles striking the moon, they found it was easier to get the drill cores in than to pull them out. Pushing down an auto jack like device to pull the cores out, Schmidt found his body lifting into space in the one-sixth gravity and repeatedly lost his balance. Okay, back. Uh, thank you. Attempts to tape back on a fender to the lunar rover that Cernan knocked off didn't work. Without it, dust spews all over them as they drive. Tonight, they'll tape together four of their plastic lunar maps and rig a temporary fender. In the hours past our midnight, ending the first EVA, Cernan fell near the limb. Yeah, I discovered something. I learned a lot today, let me tell you. And they did learn a lot, both about the fancy footwork needed on the tricky terrain of the Taurus Litro Plateau, and a lot that it's hoped will tell us the history of just what happened to make this area and the moon the way it is. In their second EVA tonight, the longest on the flight, they'll drive four and a half miles south to the edge of South Massif or Mountain, retrieving rocks and landslide material that may have fallen from the top of the mountain. And they'll also check out this strange light-colored material to the west of where they landed. This is Jules Bergman at ABC Space Headquarters. 
ABC News will report highlights of the Apollo mission throughout the evening, and there will be a special half-hour broadcast at 11.30, 10.30 Central Time. Two Apollo 17 astronauts are out of the lunar module and walking on for the second day on the surface of the moon. Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt worked for more than seven hours yesterday out of the LAM and were allowed to sleep one hour late this morning. Astronaut Ron Evans continues to orbit the moon in his command ship and all is well with him, too. While the astronauts slept, Mission Control worked on the problem of a fender on the lunar rover they lost yesterday. Today, they've been ordered to try to rig up a new one out of adhesive tape and plastic map sheets. The astronauts are now in their second day of moonwalking, and here is what that looks like. are some scientific lessons which have already been learned from the mission of Apollo 17. Scientists on the ground who have been listening to astronaut Jack Schmidt's description of the valley he's in believe that its floor is covered with volcanic ash, just what they'd hoped for. And some of the scientific experiments the astronauts set up yesterday were sending back data while they were still walking. After getting a good day's sleep following their long and busy first walk on the moon, astronauts Eugene Cernan and Jack Schmidt prepared for another detailed exploration of the lunar surface. Morton Dean reports from the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston. 
Walter Schmidt and Cernan have been out on the surface of the moon for slightly more than a quarter of an hour now, and they have been preparing their lunar rover for a trip which will take them about four and a half miles southwest to a mountain range there. They will explore for about a total of seven hours this evening, and let's listen in to what they have to say. Working there on unstowing SCP, uh, whatever it is, five. Uh, yeah, five. Maybe when you put the camera down, you might want to shoot off a few 500 millimeter frames of the north and south of the sea, since they look interesting. I, I can't tell from the TV. Gene Sterling, the spacecraft commander, will be recognized by a red or dark stripe on his arm and on his backpack. What kind of thing is that to say? But then when Gene gets done uh, configuring that SCP-5, we'd like to get on with the uh, fender fix. Then we'll do the geo prep after we'll that. Get on with it, Bob. All the preparations for their trip, that camera being controlled here at Mission Control SCB by... SCB is sample collection bag. By someone referred to as Captain Video. It's an engineer by the name of Ed Fendell. He works the camera a quarter of a million miles away on the moon. A shot of the Challenger. The astronaut slept for an extra hour today. To make up for that very busy work day yesterday. Okay, Bob, I got three core tubes. Yep. Wait a minute. I only got one. Let me get the other one. Very soon they will work on a rear fender okay. that fell apart last night. That's all I wanted. The moon okay, being turned three, into uh, a great big body shop in the okay, sky. One and a short can. Okay, copy that, you know. They fashioned a plastic fender and will attempt to clip it on yeah, to the lunar rover to prevent right here, uh, being I'm covered with dust right. as they were yesterday. Okay. Walter? CBS News will present a summary of the astronauts' second day on the moon in a special broadcast tonight, beginning at 11.30 Eastern Time, 10.30 Central. And that's the way it is, Tuesday, December 12, 1972. This is Walter Cronkite, CBS News. Good night. Finally tonight, we're going to take a brief look at the moon again. It costs a lot to get the pictures, and we don't get them very often. Here they are. SCB is sample collection bag. NBC News will be covering the Apollo 17 moonwalkers later this evening with bulletins and with more lengthy coverage beginning at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. Until then, good night for NBC News.